It is a new day in Hong Kong. Gone are the British who ruled Hong Kong as a colony for 156 years, and in their place are the Chinese, complete with a new legislature and thousands of troops. Barry Peterson is standing by in Hong Kong with the very latest. Good evening to you, Barry. Good evening from Hong Kong, China. In fact, China's bosses, who now have Hong Kong back, named a new target today, Taiwan. They say Taiwan could be like Hong Kong, live under Chinese rule and still have some freedom. The usual Taiwanese response to that is, no way. Meanwhile, here in Hong Kong, those same Chinese bosses wasted no time letting everyone know who's in charge. <laughs> The Chinese dragon was alive and well this first dawn amid celebrations at the border with China. Celebrations for the People's Liberation Army pouring in by the thousands. Some in armored personnel carriers like those used in the Tiananmen Square massacre. Their training was so thorough they were even given lessons on how to wave. They came by land, by air, and even by sea, ships for a new Navy base. And no jokes about how it rained on their parade, please. In Chinese superstition, rain on an auspicious day like this is a very good omen. And a good souvenir shot from those glad to see the PLA. We belong to mainland China, so it's very natural to have Chinese soldiers in Hong Kong, I think. Democracy advocates pushed the envelope on this first day, and no one stopped them. Indeed, the new chief executive, blessed by Buddhist monks, said democracy will be a part of this new era. There was another new beginning today, the first baby born in Hong Kong, China, a girl born to Long Sung Ha, mother, baby, and city, all doing fine. Still a bit of one-upsmanship going on here in the uh, harbor where last night the British spent about a half million dollars for a fireworks display. Tonight, the Chinese will spend considerably more than that just to show them. So for the people of Hong Kong, the order of the day is still party on. Jane? Barry, is the new Beijing-appointed legislature likely to make any significant changes? It's not really soon, I shouldn't think. In fact, the new executive is already talking about democracy in this new era. But I think as time goes on, we may see some rather substantial changes. Barry Peterson in Hong Kong, China. Thank you. Chinese leaders promise no big changes in Hong Kong's thriving economic system or its democratic traditions. But the world will be watching closely. CBS News anchorman Dan Rather asked U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright why the former British territory is so important to the United States. We are interested that Hong Kong preserve its way of life, uh, its democracy, it is vibrant. Uh, it's been important to the United States because uh, it is a democracy or has been operating in a democratic way. It's important to us because they have helped us in law enforcement issues. We have something like 65 uh, ships that stop here annually. Uh, and it's also important for the economic reasons. There are 40,000 Americans who live here. Uh, we have a great deal of investment here, uh, and there's a lot of trade. This is, that is, the takeover, the handover, if you will, of Hong Kong to the Chinese is, quote, the biggest victory for a communist government in the last half of the 20th century. Do you agree with that? Well, I think that it is uh, the Chinese believe, and, you know, this has been a piece of their territory that they felt had been usurped by foreigners. Uh, they now are getting back their sovereignty. The question, frankly, is, is who will influence whom? Uh, they are taking upon or absorbing uh, a system, this two uh, systems, one country, and here is one system that is a very vibrant economy that has, uh, might have a very strong influence on China. Secretary Albright also said that the Hong Kong of tomorrow must look like the Hong Kong of today. That is a free city. The changeover from British rule to Chinese in Hong Kong was full of ceremony and emotion for all those involved. Bob Simon reports on the dignified British withdrawal. All right. Stop! Ah! The sun did not set on the British Empire. It had been advertised. It never came up. It rained all day and all night. Prince Charles and Governor Patton got soaked at the farewell ceremony, the last purely British occasion on this last day of British rule. And the troops? It may have rained on their parade, but they didn't miss a step. 
Who but the British can make a retreat look like a triumphal march? Who else can bow to the inevitable, standing so upright with such grace and panache? For the last couple of days, people in Hong Kong couldn't get enough of them. The people who, according to Beijing, were overjoyed to see them leave, wouldn't let them leave without one more snapshot. On Stonecutters Island, soldiers of the Black Watch Royal Highland Regiment were bused to ferries where they began chugging their way back to Scotland. Glad to be going home. What soldier isn't? And yet. It's a great sadness. Uh, I've had a wonderful four years here and uh, just sad to be going. But all good things come to an end, as you guys know. In Vietnam, the last Americans turned the lights off. In Hong Kong, the British closed the gates. It was a bit more decorous than our departure from Saigon, but the essence of it wasn't all that different. It was the handing over of a country to a tough communist regime. And this time, the first time ever, not a single shot was fired. Governor Patton seemed overwhelmed by sadness as he said goodbye to his household staff. He made three tours of the driveway before leaving, a Chinese superstition indicating a desire to return. If he does, it will be as a tourist. Just before the flag came down by the Prince of Wales barracks, the prince had a few words for the incoming rulers from Beijing. Britain learned long ago that Hong Kong people know best what is good for Hong Kong. We have no doubt that Hong Kong people can run Hong Kong, as the joint declaration promises. Out with the old, in with the new. The British marched off to old Ang Syne as the Chinese were coming in with armor. And then the prince and the governor boarded the Britannia and sailed off into the night. Just before leaving, Patton sent a short cable to London. It read, I have relinquished the administration of this government. God save the queen. Bob Simon, CBS News, Hong Kong.